In this video, I'll be talking about the Eglinton West subway line, a subway proposed to be built in the city of Toronto. This subway, however, was never built. Now, while that may not seem so strange that a subway wasn't built, as many of these types of projects don't make it past the proposal stage, this was a bit different, in that construction had sort of already begun on the line before it was cancelled. So, in this video, I will talk about the history of the project, some of its details, at least those that I could get my hands on, and give my thoughts on why I think this project was actually flawed from the start, and that cancelling it may have been for the best. But first, some background. It's the 1980s in Toronto. Ugh. For the past 20 years, the city had been experiencing a subway boom. Prior to 1954, the subway looked like this. But then, practically overnight, the subway grew from one line with 12 stations to two lines totaling 62 stations. With all this alongside the growing regional network in GO Transit, Metropolitan Toronto and the province of Ontario began looking to the next phase of projects that would take the city into the new millennium. This would take the form of a plan called Network 2011. This plan would see the construction of two new subway lines, one on Shepherd Avenue and one into the downtown core, a rapid transit line to the Scarborough Town Centre and a rapid transit line along Eglinton Avenue West. Contrary to popular belief though, the plan along Eglinton was not originally a subway, but a busway, with the line being converted to a subway after the Shepherd Line and Downtown Line were completed. So with that out of the way, let's get into some details. So why was Eglinton West originally considered to be built as a BRT line and not a subway? Planners at the Toronto Transit Commission, the primary transit operator in the city of Toronto, did not believe that the Eglinton West corridor had the ridership or development potential to justify the high costs of a subway. A busway would also be easily extendable out west into the city of Mississauga and Peel region. This plan, however, did not endear itself to the politicians of the city of York and the city of Etobicoke, who questioned why Eglinton would be getting a busway, while Shepherd Avenue in the city of North York would get a subway. Those in charge of York and Etobicoke felt that their needs were equal to that of the other four municipalities of Metro Toronto. So, on the Metropolitan Council, those representing the city of York and the city of Etobicoke formed a voting block to oppose the planned busway on Eglinton Avenue West and instead favor a subway line. This leads us perfectly into the discussion of politics. At the time the Network 2011 plan was being discussed, the province of Ontario was being led by the Conservative Party under the premiership of Bill Davis. Now don't think of the Bill Davis Conservatives as your stereotypical Conservative. The Conservatives at this time had been in power for over 40 years and were responsible for the transit renaissance Toronto was experiencing, among other things. However, it was also around this time that the Conservatives would be out of power after Premier Bill Davis retired after running the province for over 20 years. In 1985, the Liberals assumed power under the leadership of Premier David Peterson. For the first two years of his mandate, the Network 2011 plan just kind of fell by the wayside. In 1987, the Liberals finally looked at the plan but were wary of its $5 billion price tag and decided to instead propose their own modified plan. It is worth noting that while the Liberals were cautious about the Network 2011 plan's price tag, they were also funding the Highway 407 project at the same time, which as you can guess did not sit well with transit advocates. The Liberal plan retained much of what was original, however for the purpose of this video I will strictly focus on the Eglinton West plan. Under the Liberals, the Eglinton West project would be an LRT line, running between Eglinton West Station and Black Creek Drive, at a cost of around $450 to $700 million. West of Black Creek Drive, bus lanes would be extended out into Mississauga. Given the small street space available, it can be assumed this LRT line would have been underground. This plan would go nowhere as in 1990, the Liberals were defeated by the New Democrat Party led by Premier Bob Ray. Now, as an aside for those who are not familiar with Ontario's political parties, the NDP are sort of like social democrats. They are the solidly left-wing party that at the time championed things like social issues and workers' rights. The Liberals were the historically center-left party and the Conservatives were the right-wing party, although during the time of Bill Davis and his predecessors, they were much closer to being center-right than full-on right-wing. Now, as much as the NDP would have liked to have supported the Network 20 plan, they simply couldn't, for at the time of their election, the economy had dove into a pretty bad recession, and the province didn't have the funds to spend on such lavish things. By the end of the NDP mandate, the economy was starting to pick itself up again, and the NDP proposed the Let's Move plan. 
this is where, in my opinion at least, everything goes off the rails. The Let's Move plan, among other things, proposed a truncated Shepherd subway to Don Mills and a truncated Eglinton West subway to Black Creek, now called York Center. Prior to this plan, Eglinton West was designed for what was appropriate, even if the cities of York and Etobicoke didn't agree. Now we find ourselves building an actual subway line on a road that doesn't need one, and according to the original Network 2011 plan from the 80s, wouldn't need one until at least 2011. What's worse is, instead of a plan that would see two full subway lines built, we are now heading towards a plan that would see two half-built subway lines. Now obviously common sense would say that if we can't afford both, then we should instead build the one that makes the most sense and gives us the highest return on investment. This is politics, however, and logical thinking has no place in politics. Canceling one line in favor of another would only serve to fuel animosity between the municipalities of Metro Toronto and could even affect the NDP's chances at re-election. Okay, so now that we actually have a plan that is firmly in place, and everybody seems to agree on, let's get on to the actual plan itself. And I apologize if the previous stuff was a little dull and sleep-inducing. The line would start at Eglinton West Station, which would be renamed Eglinton Allen to reflect the station being located at the intersection of Eglinton Avenue West and Allen Road. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the station would likely be a center platform station, as that is the TTC's preferred solution for terminus stations. The plan would also include a connection to Line 1 so trains can be stored and maintained at the Wilson subway yard. The line would then travel west to its first stop at Dufferin Avenue, with the station possibly being named Dufferin North. This station would include an off-street bus terminal for connections to the Dufferin bus, which would be split into two routes, Dufferin North and Dufferin South, and possibly an extension of the Vaughan bus, which currently terminates nearby. The next stop on the line would be Caledonia. This station would be nothing special, connecting only to the Lansdowne bus with an on-street connection, so a transfer would be required. What is of note, however, is that this station would not feature a connection to the GO Transit Barry line. This is quite different from today, in which the current under construction Eglinton Crosstown line will have a connection to the Barry GO line. The next stop on the line would be Keel Street. This station may have been named Trithui. The station would also have an, on, an off street bus terminal to connect to the Keel bus and an independent Trithui bus. Lastly, the line would reach its terminus at Black Creek Drive, with the station being named York Center. This station was to be the centerpiece of the new downtown York that the city of York was planning. This development would have been built on the site of the former Kodak lands just north of the station. There would have also been a large off-street bus terminal on the site to serve buses traveling further west. While one could assume that the line would would be built with the provision for a future westward extension to Renforth Road and the airport, it is worth noting that at the time there was no official Phase 2 proposal. And so here we reach the end of the line, a subway with only five stops and it doesn't really go anywhere. While it is true, the plan for the subway was to eventually bring development to York and establish a downtown York, the line was ultimately gambling on something that may not happen, or may not happen as well as people think it would have. So let's look at what I believe are the flaws of the plan. The most obvious one here is that the line would, would have been grossly overbuilt. And by that I mean the line would have been a full-on subway in an area that didn't justify one and may not have for many decades. Now some may say we're building for the future. And while that is always nice and commendable, we must remember that the cost of building a rapid transit line does not just end after it is built. Every year we must invest in the maintenance and upkeep of the infrastructure and so it is best that we make sure we are getting the most bang for our buck and not throwing money away into a black hole. It was a subway to nowhere for the fact that the only thing at the western end of the line was hopes and dreams. At least the Shepherd line connects to a well-used shopping mall. This could have been somewhat mitigated by having the subway go to the airport, but remember, by the time construction had begun, an extension to the airport was still a far off idea. Now, we get to what is, in my opinion, the most underappreciated flaw in the design of the Eglinton West subway. Here is a map of the TTC subway with the Eglinton West line. Now, you may also see that line 1 is a U shape, but the Eglinton line doesn't bridge the gap. Now, on its own, this would be no more than a mild annoyance that triggers people's OCD, but in this case, it is actually much, much worse. 
You see, the eastern side of line 1, the young line as we would call it, also happens to be the central north-south artery of the entire TTC network. This section of the line has the highest ridership and brings in people from both the east end of Toronto and the municipalities north of Toronto in York Region. I find the Eglinton West line's lack of a connection to this side of line 1 to be a serious omission as this is where a lot of the potential ridership is. What is worse is that throughout the entire history of the line, dating back to Network 2011 in the 1980s, there was never any serious discussion of an eastern extension of the line to Young Street. Even if the line was built to the airport, the ridership potential of the line would have been severely handicapped as the entire eastern half of Metro Toronto would have been cut off from it. An eastern extension of the Eglinton West Line to Young Street would connect it to Eglinton Station, which is the gateway to Scarborough and East York, the east end of Metro Toronto. Some of the most important bus routes to these municipalities, such as the Eglinton East Bus, the Lawrence East Bus, and the Flemington Park Bus all terminate at Eglinton Station. Not having the Eglinton West Subway connect to Eglinton Station at Young Street would in essence make it and its possible utility inaccessible to those living in Scarborough and East York. To me, this is possibly the most unforgivable flaw in the plan and comes off to me as sensible transit planning gone awry. How no transit planner at the time saw this flaw to me is a little mystifying to say the least. Regardless of all of that, construction on the Eglinton West subway began in 1994 with the digging of the launch shafts for the boring machines. However, construction wouldn't last long, as in 1995, the NDP government was voted out of power and replaced by the Conservatives under Mike Harris. This Conservative government, however, would be nothing like the Conservative governments of old, choosing instead to run a government of austerity and little spending in what it called the Common Sense Revolution. One of the first things this government did was cancel the Eglinton West subway project and fill in the launch shaft that had been constructed in an effort to rein in spending. With that, the idea of rapid transit along Eglinton would be dead for about a decade. In 1999, the now mayor of the unified Toronto, Mel Lastman, requested that the TTC come up with a new set of plans for Toronto's transit going into the 2000s while hoping the Conservative government would be more open to infrastructure spending. In the report, there was no mention of the Eglinton West subway. While projects such as the Downtown Relief Line and extensions of the Shepherd Line and Line 1 were highlighted, this drew the ire of the councillors who formerly represented the now dissolved cities of York and Etobicoke. This pushback forced Mayor Lastman to backtrack on the lack of an Eglinton Line, stating that the Eglinton subway was still a priority and that all future projects would come after it. After this, there was no talk about transit along Eglinton West until 2006, when then-Mayor David Miller and Toronto City Council endorsed the Transit City Plan, which among other things would see an LRT line built along Eglinton Avenue between Kennedy Station in Scarborough and Mount Dennis in York, with provisions for a western extension to the airport. This line would essentially follow the Eglinton West subway plan while also connecting it to the east end of the city, thus fixing what is in my opinion the greatest flaw with the original subway plan. As well, this line would be an LRT, not a subway, and thus would be a much better fit for the ridership potential and development potential along the Eglinton corridor. The Eglinton West subway plan lives on today in infamy, not because of what it was, what it may have been, or what was wrong with it, but instead because of how it ended. It's one thing for a rapid transit project to die in the proposal stage. That happens all the time. It's another thing for shovels to already be in the ground, only to have construction halted and the proverbial rug pulled out from underneath you. The worst part about all of this, though, is that in the end, Toronto really got nothing. Yes, the Shepherd subway was built, even under the eyes of a hostile provincial government. However, no money from the Eglinton line was ever moved to the Shepherd line. Instead, the province just took the money and ran, leaving us with a half-built subway on Shepherd. In an ideal world, the money saved from the Eglinton line would have moved over to the Shepherd project to help maybe complete that line in full or at the very least get it to its eastern terminus at the Scarborough Town Centre. Ultimately though, at least in my opinion, looking at the project with the facts we have today, I am hesitant to say that building a full subway line on Eglinton West was a good idea. And maybe, just maybe, its cancellation was for the best, as blasphemous as a thing like that is to say in Toronto. 
This project wasn't without criticism at the time either, with noted transit advocate and historian Steve Monroe seeing the project as transit planners focusing on subways with no way to pay for them, and proposed LRT would be the better solution for Eglinton and Shepherd. This was also the sentiment echoed by then City Councilor Gord Perks, who was head of the Better Transit Coalition. That said, it's unfortunate that in the aftermath of all this, nothing got better. The Shepherd Line was still truncated, and now the city's west end would continue to be a transit desert until work on the Eglinton Crosstown began in 2012. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to comment below your opinions on this whole project and whether or not you feel it should have been cancelled. I hope to make more videos like this talking about rapid transit projects around Toronto. With all that said, that is it for now. I'll see you next time.